Welcome to Trading Lounge and the Australian Report and today we're going to cover the ASX, CBA and BHP and just giving sort of updates on those because we'll be looking for trades once we get the right setup. Now this count here, as I mentioned before, I'm not particularly um, excited about it because um, it just doesn't fit in terms of having as one and two and three here for this and four here and five here as it is for the US market. But we'll just um, just humor me for a while. We'll just see how it goes. Um, we're looking for an A and a B and a C here. I think it's more like this if, we're, if we were looking for a bullish count. Um, we have to remember as well that... Um, you know, from the high up here to the low here, you know, we're right on that 61.8% here. Now, we would expect a reaction from that space there anyway, but will it change the trend that much? Will it bring it, um, you know, do we look at this as an A wave here, a B wave here, and a C wave here? I don't think so, but we should actually just put it in here really because, you know, it, it is possible and we shouldn't forget about it and we need to look for signs in other markets for for that sort of thing as well. So um, so it can be an ABC to this point here for that. So we'll just leave that there. But, you know, I'm thinking that, um, you know, after listening to the Fed speak, Powell speak the other day, that... Um, <coughs> Uh, it just confirms that, you know, Trump is going to pump money into the system uh, until the election's done, you know, whatever it takes, basically, you know. So, um, you know, we do see the, the, the markets, you know, the S&P being uh, bullish overall because, you know, Trumpy will just buy the dips, so to speak, you know, um, and buy all sorts of, you know, junk bonds and... ETFs, whatever it is, um, into the system. I, I don't know how they do that, but I know they do it digitally. But um, apart from that, I don't, I don't, not a full book on that. But uh, we should start tuning into that. Um, so you know, there is a case for the market to continue higher, and I think the logical count here would be having this as as five waves up here, which would you know, it doesn't look very good on the banks in this particular instance here. But on BHP, as I mentioned yesterday, we've got a clear one, two, three, four, and five here. And I know that doesn't count very well here for this either, but um, it's kind of the best fit, really. And um, anyway, an ABC here. And what I've done is uh, from yesterday, I've lifted this up one degree of structure. So um, still the same count, just one degree. I just brought it out one degree higher um, because the length of wave one here to the length of wave three here would be about about right. Um, just visually looking at that at two six one percent. So it brings us back to this this space here. Now in most of the markets around the world, we could see that the move down here was in five waves. But when you look at the S and P video that I did today, I brought in Amazon, and Amazon's got three waves down here and has got an impulse wave up here. So it's possible that the markets can continue straight up from here. Thursday in our bullish weekly cycle is normally the bear day. Like I mentioned before, Tuesday, you start seeing a bit of um, hesitation in the market. And then Wednesday, um, you start to see the swings like a V-shaped day. Um, and then Thursday, we see that as the bear day. And then Friday, we see it bullish. So, you know, we may just you know, I mean, I've just counted this to kind of fit a little bit and I don't particularly like it, but, you know, we could just see a move down here and then we move up from that point. So we need to be mindful of that and we'll work through that there as well. But as far as the crow flies, we can look at this as an, an ABC down here for the A wave, then an A and a B and a C for this. wave here because we've got five waves up here and we're already at the 61.8 percent retracement level from the previous swing here in this case so we're right on the 61.8 percent mark here so um 
Yeah, uh, you know, it's important. And the 61.8% will, will, you know, will sort of stop the market there for a little bit. You know, what it does at that point, um, it could be anything. So um, we just need to be on our toes. But in terms of long trades here, I've, you know, always put forward that we would be looking for a, you know, a, a support on the level because market comes up, market reacts, market moves up, runs out of breath comes back down, checks demand again, the buyers have set that up, will come back in and push it up from that point. So we're, you know, we're looking for something like this here to go long on. You know, we want that number tested as support. Um, and at the moment, we don't have that. It's still the resistance. So <clears throat> if the market does turn bullish on the, you know, Friday, then uh, we need to be looking for this. I've probably exaggerated it a bit in terms of the size of it. So we'll just need to be, you know, it could end up just being like this here. See this here where you got the first high above the level, come back and then go along from that point. Because this also looked like pretty much, I oh know, I can see an ABC in this one, so not saying, but um, yeah, that sort of thing after a correction. You know, we don't like to chase it when it first arrives here. We don't like to chase it, but once, once it's had some sort of correction, and this is what we'll be looking at today. Uh, hopefully Thursday will give us a reprieve from that number there and drop back down here. We'll be able to sort of see the trend on it. But if it gets up here, we need to be long. Otherwise, we'll be moving down here for this. So we'll just keep drilling in here for the um, for this count. So this is what I've done for this particular count here. I don't I don't know if it's right to be honest I just don't I just don't know I'm just shooting the breeze here um, as uh, I'm okay with wave three and wave four by the way but wave four may end up being in here for this um, because this this is you know this is counting up here as impulsive here so um, it this is the 50 60 percent retracement level to come back to because we could be looking at this we'll look at we'll look at um, the next chart as a bullish chart but this one here if this is correct and we'll look for the short trade here as well um, we'll get into finer detail in, in a moment but um, it's possible for this to come down or it can just be up here for wave one and ABC back for wave two here and then moving up from that point there. So um, we need to be a little bit uh, open to things. So on the 15 minute chart here, this I'm just looking at this as a bullish pattern here just for a moment, just, uh, just bear with me here. As a bullish pattern, this would be an A wave to here C wave here and B wave in here be something like this. It may not come all the way down. He might just sit on five nine here on these on these things here for that. Um, so we just need to be a little bit careful about that. We also too for this to be bearish in a way from th this is an impulse wave to the upside here. So that's sitting at the sixty one point eight percent retracement level here as well. So we're just starting to move into it a bit further here. So that's the support for this. So in a, you know the reality here is that um, we've got five waves up here, and we've got an A and a B and a C sitting on the sixty one point eight percent. If this comes down and, and makes that level there the resistance, like drops down and comes back and checks it there, then you can go short from that point. Put the thing point under the low here, wherever that may be, and there because there will be. Um, I'll leave it at that five six five nine six five because that's the lower end of group two. So group two will be sixty five seventy two and eighty in here. So let's just wait for the sixty five to be retested in that case. And if this was going to move down, then we can look at this moving down in terms of uh, down for one here, back for two here. Then there'll be one here, two here, three here, four here, and five here, uh, and so on for that. Um, well, I could put that to here as the A wave here, B wave here, and C wave here. That would be a fit and get five waves down to the nine five. So that's the possibility. But also at the same time, that other count can take us even lower at that point. So, um, but the normal thing is we start buying late Thursday afternoon and then Friday morning. And if the, if everything's looking good, well, then we continue to add to the positions on the Friday and also add to the Monday morning uh, and so on. Um, 
now I'm going to go to the tick chart here. So as I mentioned, this in here, um, you could probably short it under the 72 here. Um, where are we here for this? We've got just putting in group two here, 80, 72 and 65, close enough. So that's group two here. So normally, um, as I normally harp on about, group one above, we go to the closest largest number and then we um, understand that group one will try to pin the, the market to this number and then group two will try and pin it back and support it at that point. But once this becomes the resistance here, then the market is free to go down. If the market finds support on top of group one, then it's free to go to the upside at that point. Um, normally we can work it out, you know, uh, from the level which way we're going to be heading. Um, but in this instance, um, I'm having difficulty across all the markets and can't quite get get it right. Um, so just be aware that um, uh, that's the case. So, um, yeah, what else is there to add to this? So, you know, we definitely need to be on the short side because we're under the level. If we're above the level, then we need to be looking for long trades above these highs here. Simple as that, okay? And if this becomes the resistance, then you can feed some money in. You'll be trading against the main trend, so that's um, you need to be a little bit mindful um, of that. Um, the other things that I want to have a look at too are, well, let's have a look at CBA because we've been looking at CBA and uh, ANZ a little bit. So in a nutshell with them, you know, we've been looking at the moves from the ups, from the lows here um, as an A wave, B wave, and a C wave to the upside in five waves. Now, I also know too that um, this could be bullish up here and we could have this five waves up as wave one. So I'm not blind to that fact and I'm not sold on anything just yet. But as it stands, it's a very nice A, A B and C correction here. So it does seem that it's impulsive to the downside here. And the thing is here is that if this was wave one up here, for example, in five waves, well, then we would have an ABC back here. So we can look at this here. I'll put that right there. And then wave C here. So this market could just come down to this point here roughly and then move up from that point. Now, the thing about that is that um, let's just say that the market drops today okay just humor me for that so if it drops then actually i can just use this here if it drops today then this high here will become the the trigger for any long trades at that point yes we could get a better position than that but i'm just saying from the outset that that's that um that b wave there high would be it there also too with this this move down through here this c wave coming down could be wave three four and five coming down here further for that so this is what i don't this is what I, I don't know at this particular stage with with all of this so the markets around the world that we're looking at um, we're considering them bullish so um, it's probable that we've got an a and a b and a c wave to this point here and then move up from that point so we should be able to get a better position in here um, i don't particularly want to send people short here because i just don't have a strong enough setup and i don't know um, I'm just, I don't have clarity. I'm not clear on the, on, on the count. It can be anything. That's the problem with it at this point. So we just need to wait for it to, um, to play out. I mean, that's pull already pulled up to its 61.8% roughly. Yeah. So it's right on the nose here for that. Um, so, um, it shouldn't move up any further. This is also up in three waves here. So an A and a B and a C here. So it, uh, it should drop from here. I mean, if you see weakness on the opening, what's the, um, 
what's the s p closed at let me just check that so it's about a third of a percent down so it's good for our thursday weakness and if that is weakness you could probably set a short position under here and um and get down just down to the 65 or close to the 65 it should drop further but um don't push it um as such and um let's just look at bhp so with bhp here and the same with iron ore as well um i won't look at iron ore today but you know with iron ore we've been looking at five waves to the upside uh, and um that's pulling back but I, I really just wanted to see here what's going to occur in this particular space here i'm happy with one and two and three and four and five here either for wave one or wave a i think it's wave one and then abc back for wave two we've got a reasonable because if it's an abc here then then wave a here and wave c will have some sort of relationship to it um, and there is a bit there but um, let's we just wanted to see this wave four unfold a little bit further through here for this we don't really we can't really see much in i'll just go to the tick chart here for that can't really see much in here at this stage i mean if i had to count this here let's just um put this in here we would look at this as one and two and drop for three here four and five so we can look at all of this here as wave one here and two here nice drop for the third wave so we'll run with that fourth wave and fifth wave here um, it can pull back that's an impulse wave so after a corrective wave we can go down further so it could pull back well it's already pulled back near the 50 percent mark here it does look a bit impulsive here but i just really need to check that there but this is likely to open lower at this stage but it could pull back up into that space um not that we're i'm not interested in trading this just yet either we need it to set up but um it could be an a wave a b wave and a c wave to there and then drop or um, but because we've got five here we can pretty much be assured we're going to be going lower here so lower to the point of the wave four of one lesser degree which is across here so we can look for a move down into say between 35 and 34 for this here and also just so if i bring back this to the daily chart here so that's what we're sort of looking at we're looking at some sort of abc pattern through here and then we would become interested in it so hopefully it drops below the 35 into the 34 here because then that way if it manages to get back up there and sit on the 35 then we can go long from that point like it did over here it, had, it was resistance and then it became the wiggled around for a while and became support so that's what we want to go long over here and then we can go up to this area here um this is also bhp as well um as i may have mentioned uh bhp is traded in uh in about five countries i think but i'd have to double check that don't take my word i'm not i'm certainly not good on on fundamental information i'm just patents pattern per pete the pattern person or something so um but this is uh, an ADR from uh, the New York desk. And the good thing, interesting thing about here is that um, the, 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 the length of this structure here, you know, after we've got our five waves here and uh, probably one and two here and three and four here and five here. Um, I don't know if this is the ABC here or this is just the ABC here. I'll just have to check about that. But anyway, five waves to here. There is an ABC here. So this could be one here and back for two, one and back for two here. Nice strong third wave that would suit for. So, you know, we just need to give this a little bit of time here at the 50. Uh, so, so the, you know, um, it hasn't really reacted from the 50 here so it's an overshoot pattern so the overshoot pattern basically the distance that goes above is normally the distance that goes below just a bit of a rule of thumb uh and roughly speaking but it what i can say is that we're still in the early throws of this we're just in the first leg down you know and we've come back for the sec so we still need to see another low come in here we still need to see more vibration more pattern across here and then we need to see the support here 
and then we can go along on this. But the takeaway from this is that I don't think, you know, I don't think this is just an A, an A and a B and a C correction. This is much more like a third wave up here. And the fact that this here also looks like an A and a B and a C wave here, very sharp for a C wave, I granted, but it was under, you know, um, oh no, that was March, April. So it's pretty much doing the opposite, really. Yeah, but it's sharp for a C wave, so it is a bit of a concern. I mean, it, we could end up in a massive triangle here as well, really, like coming through here and through here for this and having three waves back down here and then another three here, you know, and really basically bore us to death and then move off. So that's possible. But let's just go step by step. Let's just get through this first area in here. Alrighty. Um, so... There's no real takeaway from, from this, except that this looks like a third wave and a fourth wave here. So this would be in line, you know, if this is one and two and, th and three up here and doing wave four here, then that's really going to be in line with our ASX count uh, over here. So if I go back to the four hour chart here, then that's really in line with this chart here, which I kind of like, which is which is good. It ties back in with the US markets in a different way. Um, so I'm I'm happy with that. So we just got to get through this dilemma here with all of this. So anyway, that's my uh, take on it. I don't have all the answers for, for this. So be a little bit mindful and, uh, and, and good luck with that. But um, if Thursday's bearish, then we may see Friday being uh, uh, bullish. So we'll be looking for setups on the Friday to go long. All righty, cheers.